think it's all over. With David and Rory as a top celebrity chef and jungle survivor who once swam the channel. He prepared thoroughly by covering himself in goose grease, rosemary and sage, but he drew the line to bring an onion up his arm. <laughs> Anthony Warren Thompson. With Phil and Jonathan is the great hope of British swimming, a world champion and Olympic gold medal hopeful. Thanks to him, we've gone from Olympic no-hopers to Olympic one-hopers. <laughs> James Gibson. <laughs> we kick off with a footballing excuse. David, Rory and Anthony, watch this. Here's abrasive Turkish hardman Alpai helping his country to third place in last year's World Cup. But Alpi has been mysteriously absent from his club Aston Villa since the punch-up with England, missing the weekend's derby clash with Birmingham. So what exactly was the official excuse given for his absence? David's team. Turkish hard man. What was it like? Ooh, I'll have that. You would have sorted him out with your pony oh. <laughs> I don't want to offend our Turkish viewers, but in that part of the world, you're considered quite a catch by the young man. <laughs> Love yeah, it. Yeah, the back, a little bit of a tax, they love it, can't get enough. You fetch at least three goats. <laughs> he was absent from the Villa Birmingham match, wasn't he? Yes, he was, yep. As was excitement, skill, pace, <laughs> goal. <laughs> Returning to Aston Villa, he's not that stupid, is he? I mean, <laughs> because of his antics against England, he was actually booed by his own fans, wasn't he? Bruce? He was booed by his own fans even before that. Yeah. He's he must be terribly booed by your own fans. What's it like, David? <laughs> <laughs> I must have, I have had that actually. Have you? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Why was that? Because I was shit, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great weekend. You did, I think. 6-2. Were you busy? I was quite busy, yeah. Mm. Mm. He's not very good, is he? It's not for it's good no, for him. But it's <laughs> <laughs> the weekend of donkeys and mistakes, wasn't it? There was a few. There, mm. was, there was more than a few, actually. Mm. Yeah. You turning up. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story in the paper tonight, I thought it was about, it was about David Blaine. They said, um, David came out of his box looking tired and feeble. <laughs> <laughs> Unsteady on his feet as the crowd jeered, go back to where you belong. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about an answer? No, well, no, compassionately, was it? it? Yeah. Compassionately, he wanted to spend more time with his family. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you three <laughs> After minutes. After Almost <laughs> always, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, in fact, an Aston Villa spokesman said Alpi had been given compassionate leave to spend time with his wife and family because he'd been away from them on international duty. But we all know the real reason was that he poked David Beckham on the cheek and said some mean things about his mum. <laughs> During the Turkey game, a banner in the crowd read, David Beckham, do you remember Gallipoli? To which Beckham replied, of course I remember Gallipoli. It's one of my favourite board games. <laughs> Turkish fans are famous for their banners saying, welcome to hell, a phrase they borrowed from the official slogan of the Birmingham Tourist Board. <laughs> Phil, Jonathan and James, it's a sporting feud for you. Have a look at this. Here's Britain's favourite ginger German, Boris Becker, performing on the hallowed turf of south-west London. But what has the spiky-haired one done that so upset local residents, the Woodruff family, Phil Steen? Boris Becker, has he knocked up one of the Wombles? <laughs> Presumably Madame Chalet. Yes, yes, well, I quite fancied Toby Murray. <laughs> They're brilliant, though, if you have a sex with a Womble, because they clean the flat up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> marvellous to be the tennis on the show, but also marvellous to have a swimmer on the show. Let us all welcome James Gibson, yep. ladies and gentlemen. Yep. A genuine world champion. A genuine world champion. Lovely to have you here. Congratulations. Look at that. And now you swim the, uh, is it, how many metres is it you do? 50, 50 metres, you do 50 metres? Yeah. Well, that's, that's not really a race, is it? I mean, where do you do that? In Lisa Wiley's bath? I mean, it's like one of them. You're not doing whips or anything. <laughs> can you swim, you know when you were learning to swim? He can swim. Okay. Yeah. With the, let's get that. Let's well, 50 metres, you might just push off and get the other side. <laughs> Am I right in thinking, James? You're known as the boob man due to your massive pectoral muscles. That's kind of a thing I do before a race. I sort of just... 
flex them up and down. Can we see that? Yeah, yeah, can oh, we? come on! Come on! <laughs> come on. Uh, <laughs> something for the ladies and some of the gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to stand up, though. And then I think it's only no. fair if you do it, Anthony should do it as well. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair! Actually, it's not really fair because Anthony's wearing a bra. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a nickname I got. Come on, then. Yeah. Stuff in the Spanish press. Do you do it to bump? Bump, 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 bump. Please sing along. I'll do it. Okay. Underground. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> What's that money now? Hey, your bitch can do that as well. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> What happened there? He said, my bosom. This man's got a ferret under his shirt. <laughs> so, Forrest Becker, I believe the question Who? was about uh, the Woodruff family. Every year at Wimbledon, you get a big fuss made by all the people you've got out in Wimbledon. They say the tennis players make a fuss or they make a mess. Or presumably, Boris Becker. Is it nine months afterwards there's a sudden sort of growth in the population of little gingerhead babies? <laughs> <laughs> it's Boris, it's man, the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> daddy. It's daddy. If I say born, he's a cupboard daddy. <laughs> it was to do with uh, people in Wimbledon. So presumably, either he yeah. didn't pay his rent, or no, uh, did he? Did he wreck the house or he wrecked the garden? I remember reading something about this. He did something, he left he it in the bag. He wrecked the place. garden, he's correct for three points. Yeah. Well done. I know, can it? In fact, Boris Becker infuriated a local family, the Woodruffs, by ruining their lawn. Like many other leading players at Wimbledon, he hired a house from a local family for the duration of the tournament. Unfortunately, Boris couldn't resist playing football with his mates on the manicured lawn, and the garden was trashed. The Woodruffs were angry, but not as furious as the couple who rented their house to Pete Sampras. They returned to find he'd pulled the windscreen wipers from their car, <laughs> used one of their tyres as a swing, and needlessly moved the piano upstairs. Before we go any further, though, if we're talking tennis, can we not have a moment's silence for the shocking and tragic news? Anna Kornikova has quit. Mm. I know, yeah, it's a blow to you, yeah. and I'm especially shocked. I thought she quit about three years ago. <laughs> Tim Henman has a detailed list of requirements whenever he rents a house for Wimbledon. It must be private, secure, and have a big telly so he can watch the second week. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have three points and David's team have three points. Yes. Right. Round two is photo fit where three sporting characters are blended into one. David's team, take a look at yours. <laughs> There's two people I know that wear glasses like that, and that's definitely not Bono, is it? L.E.G. Oh, yeah, three really people, genius. sorry. Now, I think that uh, mouth is um, someone who's um, just watched his team beat Pathanaikos 5-0. <laughs> what do you mean, like the sunny, chuckling face of Mr. Laughter himself, Alex Ferguson? Alex Ferguson. Arsene Wenger's rose-tinted spectacles, isn't it? Be careful, he's very The glasses. The only one I know is, is Edgar David. Right. I know that topic. That's out of um, Linda Barker's new show. And she modelled it on Phil Tufnell in the jungle. Are you kidding? I did. That head's Phil Tufnell. You know, I smoked that when I got back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My favourite bit in that was when uh, Fashionu came back after having shown off and Wayne Street said, 1,000 sit up my arse. And I thought, well, given the choice, I'd probably go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if you're right. Let's Split it up. So that was the Linda Barker designed headgear of Phil Tufnell, the swimming goggle eyes of Dutch footballer Edgar Davids, and the ever cheerful mouth of footballer's pot stirring knight of the realm, Sir Alex Ferguson. <laughs> we may mock him on this show, but let's not forget that Phil was actually a brilliant cricketer who played twice for England in his 42 Test match career. <laughs> Edgar Davids has had operations on both eyes and consequently has the worst eyesight in football, apart from Mrs. Martin Keown. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen still regards Sir Alex Ferguson's knighthood as her biggest mistake. He's on his knees, she's got a sword. <laughs> Phil Steen, here's your photo fit. <laughs> I think it, whoever it is, the bottom face, he looks like he's holding his breath. Now, could he be the bloke whose job it is to muck out David Blaine's box? Because <laughs> after 44 days, that must be minging in there. Can you imagine? I think the hair looks a bit like uh, Beckham when he went to South Africa. Mm -hmm. I think Beckham's turned into one of our great thinkers. Quite seriously, did you uh, read in the paper the other day he was talking about the Euro? Oh, yeah. Of course, he's now got a different perspective being in Europe. Yeah. And he said that he thinks the Euro is a good idea because our economies could well be convergent. 
and he suspects that the interest rate is firm enough to withstand the instabilities, as indeed is the housing market, able to withstand any fluctuations in the economic climate. Well, actually, what he actually said was, it's dead good. But I'm, I'm paraphrasing that, <laughs> because I imagine that's what he meant. Um, eyes are the bald-headed referee. Name? Frederick Victor Hagrid. That's the one. <laughs> Kalina. I'll oh, write the Romanian. <laughs> Kalina. Kalina. Yeah, maybe. That's David Beckham. That's the book I took about. And the bottom <laughs> face is Barely an athlete. Kalina. It looks like uh, a runner. Chambers. That's, look it up and see if you're right. Brian Chambers. Three out of three, well yeah. done. Yeah. 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 Yes, what we saw was the ill-advised cornrow plaits of David Beckham, the bulgy eyes of slaphead card waver Pierre Luigi Kalina, and the jaw of the world's fourth fastest man, Britain's Dwayne Chambers. When David Beckham joined Real Madrid, he was offered a million pesetas a game. He turned them down saying, don't get me wrong, I love pesetas, but there's only so many chips a man can eat. <laughs> Mr. Kalina is universally admired as the world's best reverie. Even Alex Ferguson has given him his highest possible accolade, cheating Italian bastard. <laughs> After a string of disappointing fourth places, Dwayne Chambers has earned a reputation for losing his bottle when he's asked to perform. A bit like Rio Ferdinand. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have six points and David's team have six points. We press on with the treble where the teams link three sports personalities with three objects. David's team, your subject for the treble is sporting injuries, and your three are error prone Spurs and USA goaltender Casey Keller, Irish Ryder Cup hero Paul McGinley, and Everton and England shot stopper Richard Wright. But which one's been injured by a set of golf clubs? Who came a cropper in his loft? And who was harmed by a simple pot of jam? David's team. Remember Dave Beckham, he, he injured his foot, didn't he? Trying to trap a bottle of salad cream. Mayonnaise. It was mayonnaise. That was mayonnaise, not well, salad cream. Because I think we're going to put all of a sudden. Salad cream. All right. Salad cream, salad cream if you're lucky. <laughs> Casey Keller's a goalkeeper, David. He is. He is. He actually wears contact lenses, you know, David. Little tip for you there. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> he never had a Vince Bundy when he played, did he? Yeah, that was right, yeah. Howler, wasn't it? Excuse me. Oh, sorry. sorry. We're we on a run now. That's one in a row. Exactly. <laughs> How can you hit yourself with jam? For God's sake. You put jam on your gloves, is that possible? To get sticky fingers, I wish. It would be great if they had something, you know, adhesive you put on your gloves. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but they used to, like, there was a glove company that brought out this glove that was, like, supposed to be the next best thing to the Predator boot, and it had, like, this cellophane, oh. and you took the cellophane off, and it really worked, but they, what they forgot to tell you was that, like, goalkeepers died, and as soon as you put your hand on the floor, you saw all dirt and grass and everything, and how'd you get that off? It yeah. ruined the tail, so and later on in the game, you had two itchy bollocks on there as well. <laughs> Well, you need to get the post at a corner. Yes, the post. I know, I know a righty one. He was in, he was in the loft, or getting, trying to get into the loft. And he was putting some suitcases or whatever. We're assuming like. as um, we have a golf club, it can't be a golf club, so it must be Casey Keller Golf Club. Jam. I don't know how McGinley injured himself with jam. You've got three out of three. Well done. <laughs> In fact, goalkeeper Casey Keller knocked out his front teeth, taking his golf clubs out of his car. Golfer Paul McGinley cut his hand trying to open a pot of jam, and keeper Richard Wright injured his shoulder when he fell off a loft ladder in his garage. He was up there practicing saving a David Beckham penalty. <laughs> After Casey Keller let in ten goals in three games, Glenn Hoddle was given the sack, a performance that's already ensured that Keller will win Spurs player of the season. <laughs> Paul McGinley cut his hand on a jam jar. When they realised what he'd done, a cry went out, Don't touch that jam! What jam? said a sheepish-looking Colin Montgomery, licking his fingers. <laughs> it's unclear what Everton's Richard Wright was doing up in the loft unless it was feeding raw meat to the Rooney brother they don't talk about. <laughs> Phil Steen, your subject for the treble is the secret of my success. And your trio is... England, Kicking Machine and Scourge of the Springboks, Johnny Wilkinson. Former swimming champion and gladiator, Sharon Amazon Davis. And 
two times Wimbledon champion Serena Williams. But Phil's team, which one attributes their success to not drinking lemonade? Who puts it down to urine? And who reckons their success is due to a Doris? <laughs> urine, you know this is the old rumour about weeing in swimming pools. And they used to say when I was growing up that if you weeing it, there was something they put in that would turn the, yes. the pool red. Or oh, blue, all, I would say. Yeah. Blue, well that's rubbish. And we all know that, because I know, because <laughs> all that happens is the pool gets a little bit warmer and all the girls in the class call you stinky what? <laughs> <laughs> If you ever see anybody leaning on the side of the pool, smiling, you know what's happening. You know what's happening there. Especially if you see a lady near the bit where the old jet comes out, they go. Can <laughs> I ask you, sir, do you urinate freely in the pool when swimming? Freely, yeah. Is it inside? I think I've urinated in pretty much every swimming pool in the world. And proud uh, of it, young man. Well, well, well done, I think. Well <laughs> written. <laughs> people, you know, people say that youngsters in this country have nothing to offer. There's a young man who's been around the world pissing in other people's swimming pools. You look like you pissed in that suit, sir. <laughs> it was white when I bought it, as a matter of fact. Can we move no. on? Okay, so you think Ms. Davis well, possibly does wee in the pool. Didn't she yeah. say that when she was on the show? She did say that, I think. She said she, she made them. Done. So it's probably her weeing in the pool. He's a rugby player. Yeah, yeah, Johnny now, there was one game. Apparently. And so we did well, apparently. We did. I watched some of it. It's the most boring game in the world. <laughs> it's boring. I didn't even understand it. The referee kept awarding penalties for no logical reason that I could understand. He gave a penalty for being offside. Okay, I understand that. Then he gave a penalty for touching the ball on the ground. Surely that's the purpose of the game. <laughs> then he gave a penalty to one of them for not taking their library books back on time. <laughs> there was a general knowledge round. What's the atomic number of strontium? Don't know it. Penalty to South Africa. <laughs> it's rubbish. <laughs> Johnny Wilkinson's a legend, mate. Serena is a lovely woman. I find her most attractive. I always think she should be a, a ballet dancer. Do you think? Yeah, you look at her bottom and I always think, nutcracker, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Good thanks, Claire. Yes, I am. What does lemonade do to you when you play? I don't like to drink too much lemonade when I'm playing. As you know, I'm, I'm seeded third in the country at the moment. Um, <laughs> in front of Hemman? I, I'm slightly <laughs> behind Hemman. I met Hemman. Actually, we always knock Hemman on the show, and I don't think we should. He's a lovely fellow. I met him last year. I paid him in a charity match, and I thought he was such a nice bloke, I even let him win. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're right. Serena and the lemonade, which would mean Mr. Wilkinson and Doris, for whatever reason, we do not know. I'll give you three points for that. Well, well, <laughs> Yes, in fact, Johnny Wilkinson puts his brilliant kicking down to a make-believe woman called Doris. He imagines a woman sitting in the crowd behind the post and tries to hit her. This he calls doing a Doris. Emil Hesky employs the Doris technique when he plays for England. For God's sake, Doris, start sitting behind the goal. <laughs> Sharon Davis once claimed that she would urinate as she swam to put off competitors swimming behind her. And Serena Williams attributes her recent success to not drinking lemonade. Sharon Davis was once surprised by Michael Aspel at Cheltenham General Hospital when he approached her with those immortal words, Sharon Davis, tonight I'm going to be doing your operation. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have nine points and David's team have nine points. regulars to have a good old joke now as we play field of sportsman David and Rory your turn first you'd like to go and take your position no, you'll have a suitable amount of time to try and work out who's between you yes. My holds <laughs> on. and can we have our first mystery guest please Okay, now you might need to go towards the front of the stage, but your time starts now. Hey. Where are we going? I don't know. Are we close? Are we getting warmer? This is terrifying. Warmer. Oh. I'm, where are you going? I've come across something <laughs> clumsy and wooden, David. Oh, it feels... <laughs> it's a boat. Oh, oh, what's that? Pilots have kidnapped the audience. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, who's that? Wait, who's pulling? Ah, are you, Dave? Be careful. Not at all. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's easy. Big muscle. <laughs> getting worse, isn't he? He's really into it. What is it? <laughs> is well, I'll be here. It's a boat. It's a boat full of seamen. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, there's two. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, what's this? <laughs> Baby, <laughs> have you shaved your head? <laughs> Wait, oh, I can't, I can't move. <laughs> Can I get across Jesus. here? Watch me for. I've got a place, Daddy. I'm Jesus. not going to watch you. Right, <laughs> <laughs> They're going to make fantastic it's, ugly tits. It's a boat. Is it Mind leaking? Time's running out. Oh. It's, a, it's leaking. It's a boat called Man City's Defence. Oh, no, rubbish. Oh, hold time's on. Time's running out. I'm going to Is it, um... Yeah. Oh. It's Mike Nolsmith and Rob Abernathy, who are the cross-ocean rowers. Let me go to your position, please. Now, I'll tell you. Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. He looks like Linford Christie a bit, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Time starts now. <laughs> What's that? What's that? Boy? What's that boy? Go a bit further up. So. <laughs> Nick, I think it's a horror case. Oh. <laughs> Everyone down in the cellar. What's that on the floor? Nick? What's Go this? the other way, Phil. Is it one old Dino's dentist giving him a flossy? Where am I? <laughs> He's got a rubber pants on. <laughs> oh, it's a seal. He's got bare feet. It's a bloke in a wetsuit. He's uh, having a piss by the field, isn't he? Is it the... Uh, Time's running out. The, it's the world champion barefoot skier. skier. David Small, I'll give you that. Three points, well done. <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Phil's team have 12. Oh, yeah. In our right position. In our right position. <laughs> we finish as ever with the name game. The team in the lead goes first, which is indeed Phil's team. Jonathan gets to do the clues. <laughs> as many names as you can. Fellas, in the time allotted. Defeat is not an option. Now, okay, uh, he would not wee when he was asked to. He was wee in the house. There you go. Okay. But second name is a singer. Al Johnson. Uh, no, not Al Johnson. Um, Sammy Davis Jr. It's not Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, no, hello, Jerry. Whitney Houston. No, please, Houston. <laughs> All right, he landed on the moon. First man to land on the moon. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. First name is the same as that dozy footballer, that bloke. Lance, uh, Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong, well done. Is oh, that who that was it? Yeah, go, okay. go, go, go. Uh, uh, Second name, this is a tennis player, swims like a fish. fish. Yeah, our uh, first name is the French for Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Marty. Marty Fish. Marty Fish. Marty Fish. Marty Fish. All right. This is a swimmer, breast over. Second name is what? A, a noise a cat makes if you turn on it. Meow. Squeal. Squeal. Close enough, Mew. Mew. Darren Mew. Darren Mew. Well done. Okay. Uh, all right. Second name, remember on Are You Being Served, she loved her pussy. 
Oh, yeah. Preferably blonde hair. That's, no, that Duncan was Wendy Mitchell. The other one, Mrs. John Slocum. Mrs. Slocum, the first name. The Prime Minister, Ted. Oh, 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 like a sailor. Yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. All right. Uh, this is the tennis player. Uh, first name, if he was English, he'd be John Charles. Second name is that chocolate I can't pronounce. Like, what's that? What's that? Yeah, yeah, but the first yeah, name. Well, there you go. And the first name, John Charles. <laughs> John Charles the first. If he was Spanish. <laughs> if he was Spanish, John Charles in Spanish. Juan. Juan Charles. There you go. Yeah, All right. First name, this is the bloke who took that record off you. You remember that record? Matthew Aiden! Yeah, Matthew Aiden. We got in there, we got in there. Matthew Aiden. We got in there. 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 So, just to recap, what's the French for Tuesday again? Tuesday! Okay, so David's team, you need 11 points. Rory, good luck. You can do it. Time starts. Hang on, I didn't open it yet. Is there? Uh, Indian, plays for West Ham. He's, no, he plays for Spurs now. He, he's um, it's what Indians uh, row in. Canoe. 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 Very good. Canute. Very good. Um, yeah. This is an Aussie tennis player. Orient, the East London football team. The first Orient. Late. 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 Um, Late. 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 Yeah, very Late. good Late. indeed. Um, he's got a Jewish surname. He plays for England's rugby team. Uh, Rachel. Surname. <laughs> 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 the flower pot men. Bill and Ben. Ben. ben and you know. Ben and Atherton. Ben. Cohen. Jewish name. Ben Cohen. Very Cohen. good. Um, second name is a, is a is a long is a bird with a long neck. You can't eat them. One. And the first one is another name for ch uh, for cocaine, which you know. Coke. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos. Carlito. In, in uh, Carlitos. What? In, in English is Charles. Charles. Charlie. Charles. Charlie. Very good. He plays for your team. Uh, he's from Costa Rica, I think. Paulo Yeah. Um, this is a um a oh, uh, uh, Dutch painter. Piet Peter Paul. Peter Paul. And Mary. <laughs> well, his, his, his name is the Italian for Little Barrel. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it F1, F1 driver? Peter Keller. You know, Peter Paul, you know, who painted those fat women? Oh, uh, Peter Paul. Oh, um. Rabbin Rab 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 Puff. Okay. Um, this is a uh, first name, uh, the Menace. Uh, Burke Menace. Menace. First name. And uh, this is a name for a, um, I think it's what the Americans call, um, call a spot, isn't it? Isn't it? A zit. 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 No, no, another word for that. Um, Ruben. 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 So David's team have 14, but this week's winner is Phil's team with 19. <laughs> so thanks to David Rory and Anthony, Phil, Jonathan and James. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Yeah.